Hello there everyone, welcome back to episode 8 of the Bournemouth Career Mode on Football Manager 2017. It's the final game of the season against West Bromwich Albion and as you can see, the league's all sorted. No relegation to be sorted, the top four is pretty much sorted, Chelsea and Arsenal are three points away from each other, the league's been sorted. So this year unfortunately there's not really much going on the final day. Of course there's 10 games, but not much anyway. But since you've lost been with me, which was the game against Burnley, which is a brilliant game... We haven't had too many brilliant games since. Now, we lost to Tottenham United, which we're kind of expecting. Then we drew against Swansea, and Swansea scored two goals in quick succession. That was really annoying. We were outclassed by Everton, but then we did beat Newcastle, in which, I want to say... Or was that... Uh, yes, it was the Everton game, in which Kenji Kure, who we bought in... Or got a from Swansea that we bought in in January for £85,000, really cheap. Well, I thought we'd play him in a few games at the end of the season and see how he gets on. He scored against Everton and he had a 6.5 rating against Newcastle. I think we'll try him again today for the last game against West Brom. Now, unfortunately, really against Burnley, we're going, we could still get Europe. Obviously, now we can't. The most we can get is 11, for the least we can get is 12. So, we're going to get a mid-table finish regardless. Now, nothing's really gone on since the last episode. No, nothing in terms of transfers. Uh, I'm trying to think anything really that's happened. I don't really think there's anything that's happened. Charlie Daniels is out. Minx is out as well. So left-back wise, actually, we're going to have to go with Nathan Ake as a left-back today, which is okay to me. He's coming back from injury today. And as you can see, me be cold and cough. He's still there. Hopefully, it'll be gone pretty soon. But for the last game of the season, we're going with a 4-2-3-1 formation. Fairly standard. It's going to be Pereira's last game for the club, unfortunately. And maybe a few of these players may be playing the last games of the club. Of course, you never know. But Callum Wilson, of course, is lacking match fitness, and it might be his last game for the club. But West Brom have had a really bad season, it seems, down in 17th. Oh, pardon me, 17th. So, they clearly haven't had a good season at all, but we've had a, we've had a decent season. We've broke the 40-point duck, but unfortunately, I, I honestly think about 10 games before the end of the season, my players have just gone home. The, the, they'd got on holiday already, and they didn't really have much care for the league. That That's what I think, and it, it's tough to motivate a squad that have got nothing to play for at the end of the season. That, that's the that's the worst thing, I think, with mid-table Premier League clubs. You, you, you get a good, decent start to the season because there's, there's a chance that you could get Europe. But when you get to that time where you can't get relegated, but then you're never going to get that European spot, there's nothing to play for, is there? So it's a, tr it's a tricky situation, and really, the players haven't got much to play for. And as you see then, West Brom have only had one shot. They've scored that, though, but we're controlling the game, which is quite a shock. To see West Brom taking that shock lead. Let's have a look at the goal. Obviously only one game today. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of the... Well, I haven't really done any transfer business since you've last been with me. The last time I flew with me, I looked at the transfers and maybe people we want to take out. But the problem is, unless I, until I know the transfer budget for next season, which, fingers crossed, should be at the end of this video, at the end of the season. And also, by the way, just to fit this in, I've signed a new contract with Bournemouth, which means I'll definitely be at the club in the next two seasons. So that's good, because this season will be carrying on for next season, I'll probably, we'll probably just do two seasons because obviously the FM beta is going to be coming pretty soon and I'll be moving on to the FM18 beta pretty soon. But nothing really going on here. Looks like West Brom are playing better than us. As I, as I say, really, we've gone home and it, it's a really irregular Premier League season and literally there's nothing to play for apart from, look at that, five clubs drawn on 38 points. But it doesn't really matter apart from morale, whether you finish 13th, 14th or 17th. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, Ake pass it to Ibe, and this has been quite dull. I, I, I was going to bring you the Newcastle and West Brom games, and I wish I did bring you the Newcastle game now, but it, it's been quite dull this end of the season. I just don't know how this is happening. This is just ridiculous. But it's been, it's been quite a dull end of the season. We had quite a bit of positivity at the start of the season. I think we were doing really well. We were, we were as high as 7th or 8th at one point, so we were really positive. But now, unfortunately, it's just not happening for us. So we're being mugged by a West Brom side at the Hawthorns. This just isn't good at all. And this is not a positive way to end what has been a good season, I'll be honest. We, we've 46 points as it stands. OK, the goal difference has been quite poor. So I think we did, do need to improve the defence. And Crystal Palace, Burnley and Huddersfield have gone down. I was actually looking at trying to buy Mamadou Sacco from Palace. I think he's a top defender. Obviously, as a Liverpool fan, I don't see why we let him go. But unfortunately, he did sign a new contract with Palace. But there are a few players from Burnley, Palace and Huddersfield to like to pursue. So maybe we can get some of those in the break. Which, which I will be bringing you, I think, tomorrow or in two days. I can't remember when this episode's coming out. So it'll either be tomorrow or the day after that Season 2 will start. And then we're going to do daily episodes of Season 2 
up to the end of that season. And then obviously we'll move on to the FN18 beta, which will be doing a season with Liverpool with one or two seasons. And then we'll go and do some saves when the full games comes out. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to FM18. I'm actually really enjoying this save. I, I, in some ways, it's a shame that I'll be leaving this save after next season because I am genuinely recording, apart from this stupid game, I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely loving recording this save because it's, it's, it's a club that you can go places with. I don't like starting with top clubs. I like starting with sort of a mid-table club and then progressing them because that, that's the only way I think you can work it in FM. I think that's the most enjoyable way to go. and I, I just love doing that sort of thing. So... That is always good. I always like coming from the championship side and then putting your team in that in the Premier League and then progressing that way. But it is tough to progress that way. But obviously that's what I'll be doing in FM18 with my local team. Hence for doing the Evo Stick Northern Premier League at the moment and trying to get up into League 2 and that would be pretty good. I, I don't intend to get to the Premier League and do anything magical. But if we can take them up three divisions to the Premier, uh, the Premier League to League 2, that would be really, really special. Let's have a look then. Will we get a goal on the final day of the season? Wilson, Adam Smith, Pereira, will he get his last goal of Phobie though? Ibe and Neon throws himself in front of the shot. Let me know, guys, in the comments as well, who you think our player of the season is. I think young player of the season, it's, it's a tie between Pereira and Moussa because Moussa has been very good. He's been a real shock and a real good shock for us. So I think it's either Moussa or... Pereira, but as a player of the season, I think you've got to go with Fobi, haven't you? A Fobi has been brilliant. 18 goals in all competitions, and I think he's quite young as well. He's 24, yeah, I thought so. So, I guess you could count him as young player as well, but if you look at elder players, then we'll go with that. But we'll bring Alvarez on for a Fobi, Lennon on for Wilson, just bearing in mind that some of these players might be playing some of their last games. So, you want to give him a bit of an exit from the club. I think Brad Smith will leave, as I discussed last time. But this has been a tragic way to end the season. It, it's not been re respective at all of how well we've done this season. We've had 11 shots, but we have not scored any of them. West Brom really are probably the, have the same mentality as us. They've got nothing to play for. But they want to make sure they're finishing like 13th rather than 17th, which is fair enough. They're doing sort of that at the moment. They're in 14th rather than 13th. But that's still a decent finish in the league. Can we at least get one goal, though? That would be nice to finish off our season. We've had a really good season. I'll go through a few of the good results we've had this season. We've had plenty of them. And Hart has actually got a shot. But it's just been one of those games that we haven't done well in whatsoever. But this is my first full season of FM on YouTube. So if you've got any feedback or anything like that, please leave it down in the comments. So I can improve in the weeks up to FM18. It's so close now. I think it is literally probably a fortnight. And Simon Francis should have scored that. But it, it, it should be a fortnight before FM18. And I'm really excited for the beta and all that comes with it. I just hope that I don't... I just hope that I enjoy the game. Because with this game, I do admit that before I've started YouTube on it, the last two months I haven't been on it much. Because, I don't know, it just goes away, doesn't it? They enjoy it for FM sometimes. And I think I need to make sure that... Obviously, I'm really enjoying it now. But at the times in FM18, when I'm not enjoying it so much, I need to make sure that I keep playing through and keep producing videos. But anyway, this is probably going to be a non-eventful minute of the game. So, I'll see you at full time. Okay then, so that's full time, and full time of course for our season, I'm not happy with that at all, but our season has been half decent to say the least, let's have a look what we get, so Bournemouth has received 16.78, 73 million sorry, for achieving 12th place in the Premier League, we need to do our press conferences, we'll do all that in just a second, uh, but yeah, obviously scouting and science have all been done, we'll have a quick look at our best games this season, so if we take out no competitions, I'd probably say if we look at the most, there we go, here are the best games of the season, the games that we've won. That domination over Leicester, I think, has to be the best game of the season. We absolutely dominated them. And I think in every home game, we have filled the stadium, which is really good to see. Apart, actually, from that Chelsea game, where it wasn't too much interest. But we've had two 5-3s, 1-5-2, 1-4-3 against Liverpool. And if you look at those clubs, Liverpool are definitely the most prestigious. And probably the worst game of the season was either that West Ham, where we got dominated... Or probably the likes of Man United. It's quite alarming here to see that in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 Premier League games, they didn't score a goal. That's worrying. That is very, very worrying to say the least. But in those 27 games that we did score goals, we scored 67 goals. But we did concede 85 goals, which is quite a shock and not too brilliant. Let's have a look at the youth squad sides then. The, our youth under 23 has actually won the Group 7 and then get promoted to Group 6. Really positive to see. And then in the under-18s, we have actually finished fourth 
in the group two. So we're, we're quite a way above where we are in the under-23s and the under-18s, and it looks like we did decently in that league. So that looks all good to us. I don't think any of our players particularly in any of these top stats, but oh well. But actually, if you look at competitions then this season, we've done half decent, 12th place in the Premier League, 5th round of the FA Cup, and 4th round of the AFL Cup. Really, that's where they expected us to be, the club did, so that's good for me. And, yeah, that looks good to me. But I will just do a few of the press conferences, a few of the nitty-gritty things, and then I'll see you when we get our transfer budgets, and we can kind of look at our aims for next season. So here we are then, guys, for the end-of-season awards and all that stuff. So that's our team of the season. Benicophobia is a striker, that's fair enough. Pereira definitely gets into there, I agree. And Sermon, obviously, that's the club, gets into there as well. Benicophobia, player of the season. Wilson, goal of the season. We'll have a quick look at that, shall we? But that was our lineup back in the day with the 4 one 3 2 God, that brings back memories. Obviously, Crystal Palace is finishing last in the league and getting relegated. Is this one of the games I showed? I can't quite remember. I think this was the game. Was this the game that we lost? I think this was the game that we lost against the after the EFL Cup game against Liverpool. But Fraser plays to Wilson, and that was, in all fairness, a good goal for Callum Wilson. Sign of the season was Ricky Alvarez from Sampdoria. He hasn't really proved himself just yet. He's played 10 games for us and got an average rate of 6.66, so not too brilliant. But he's still got time to prove himself. And the young player of the season is Ben Kofobi, 24 years old. So, yeah, things went exactly as anticipated. Match of the season, 3-1 against Liverpool. And moment to forget, 6-1 against Arsenal. 100% full on average was really good. Had uh, We've used the most players in the Premier League. And the highest we were, it looks, in that season was 7th. So that's really good. So, next season, I think... Top half, I think that's fair enough. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, let's look for a mid-table finish instead. I respect that everyone's got what they want to say. I'd like to get top half, but oh well. Lloyd's growth hasn't been a good sign, I probably agree with that. Skating reports and all that nonsense, and we, we get... No, we don't get anything. Nearly changed summary. You can uh, stop the video here if you really want to look at that. I, I thought that we would get... Ah, okay, this is interesting. Unfortunately, this won't be done until next season. But the Board of Adepts plans to enlarge the season by 5,732 seats. And the financing the project will be done without any external funding. That's really good. And yeah, that looks really good to me. So that's another... So the capacity goes up to 17,000. They've clearly seen that we've been full for every game this season. So it seems sensible to improve the stadium a little bit. Now, I don't get where this... Um, transfer budget thing is going to come from. Are we ever going to get this transfer budget? If it comes through and it's zero... I'm going to have such a face palm because it looked from the projections that the transfer budget was decent, but obviously not if we get a zero transfer budget, but I don't know when we're going to get this transfer budget. It will be at some stage, but I don't really care about this update. But if you look at the finances and the projection, I, I don't think I'd be stupid to think that when it says transfer budget, 35 million, that it would be lying and, and telling me something different because there's only one transfer budget. It's not like there's several transfer budgets. There's only one transfer budget, so... I don't know why it would be 35 million there and then say zero. So I'm sure, I'm positive, we will get a good transfer budget. But we're just waiting for that now. So it would be brilliant, FM, if you could bring it up at some point. Here we go. We can finally see it. Board set initial budgets. We'll have a quick look in a second. But 7 million tax bill, that is not good. Commercial summaries. So we've got two new sponsorship deals. The most exciting and merchandisable shirts is a phobie. Wilson, Arta, Iben, Lennon, that's interesting. 16 million in price money, 88 million in revenue, of course, of that new TV deal. And are we ready for the budgets? 24 million and 1.2 million wage budget. That is pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that, actually. 35 million, it did say. But 20. Oh, I suppose that's the end of next season, isn't it now? But. I'm happy with that. I'm very, very, very happy with that. So we've got 24 million to play with. How can we improve this Bournemouth squad, which for some reason doesn't exist? But that's because they're all on holiday. But I think this squad will be a bit different when you come back. I've got my own ideas on how to improve it. And I think I'm going to go and do that now. I'm so excited to go and improve this squad. And anyway, I'll see you after the summer. And uh, I'll see you for Season 2. Thank you very much for watching Season 1. And I'll see you for Episode 9 in a few days. See you guys later.